Okay, one thing we really have to think about is what we're going to do in terms of managing our horses. So this is a horse that's been sent off for mouthing or education before having its dental issues attended to, and you can see the result. Take a good look at that cheek for a minute. Look at the size of the damage, look at the bruising, look at the ulceration, look how red raw it is, and just imagine for one second that was your mouth. Is that going to be painful? Is that going to be a performance issue? Do you think this horse has taken a backward step in terms of its earliest steps in education? And yet it's as simple as having just removed the sharp points, extracted the wolf tooth and maybe done a few other small issues and this horse wouldn't have had to have suffered any of this. So please, if you've got young horses or horses that are going off for an education, take care of any dental problems before they have that education. Again, is this painful? Is it a welfare issue? Is it a potential nutritional issue? Is it a potential performance issue? So what are we looking at here? We're looking at an incisor, a front tooth in a horse that's been fractured, it's been split right down the middle and in doing so, what is in the middle of all teeth? What's in the middle of your teeth? Nerves. Yeah. So in the middle of this tooth is a nerve, that nerve sits in an area also referred to as the pulp we now have a pulp exposure or an exposed nerve so again this horse will need a protective layer put over that or the tooth to be extracted if neither of those two things are done then down the track it will need an extraction or a root canal because the tooth will die, the nerve will die and eventually the tooth will abscess so common signs of dental pain in horses perhaps you could take a few seconds and just name a few So what's this? This is the most common sign of dental disease in horses. All right, absolutely nothing. This is one of the more dramatic signs. This is called quitting. Okay, so quitting is when a horse balls up feed into its cheeks, and they do this because usually they're in pain and they're smart enough to work out that if they put that layer of grass between the tooth that is sore and their cheek, it gives them some relief. Okay, so horses are very intelligent animals. This is pathognomonic. In other words, if you see this, the horse has a problem. And in the next slide, we're going to see inside the same horse's mouth and we're going to see the problem. You see inside the same horse's mouth and you'll notice after rinsing, we've got a bright light source, speculum, sedated patient, okay? We see all this grass still trapped up along the outside edge of those teeth against the cheek. Again, this is quitting and it's because several of those teeth in this horse are affected by periodontal disease and now require extraction. Here are the teeth following removal or extraction. You'll notice there are flies all over those teeth and that's because those teeth are covered in the bacteria that are involved in periodontal disease and the flies absolutely love it. Above that you've got all your bol boluses of food or quid and down on the right hand side you've got something that has absolutely nothing to do with dental pain but certainly is involved in pain. Looks like a plug, doesn't it? Looks like a plug you could put in the sink. This is called a bean comes from the horse's urethral fossa. Without going into too much detail, it's a build-up that ends up in the end of the horse's penis, and if it's not removed regularly, it becomes large like that. You en end up with similar problems that older men suffer with prostate disease because that bean pushes on the urethra, and the urethra is the tube that the horse wheezes through. Okay, we've got a couple of videos here very quickly. Uh, the first two are a horse that's come in with some dental issues and we watch it eat and we notice that it drops feed, it chews abnormally, it opens its mouth and it shows facial expressions consistent with dental pain. Next we watch it uh, post removal of the affected tooth and you see that it uh, doesn't open its mouth as wide, it chews without dropping feed and its facial expression is better. This video shows a horse that has severe periodontal disease and again you'll notice that the horse opens its mouth exceptionally wide, makes facial expressions consistent with dental pain and shows clear signs when eating that its chewing is abnormal. Slide, well it's a waste of money, basically. So on the left hand side we see some poo if we look at that poo, we see a lot of undigested grain and a lot of long stem fibres. 
Okay, so the person who owns this horse is paying to feed fat sparrows or fat cockatoos or fat galahs, right? So they're spending money and it's going straight, that money is going straight through their horse. If we look on our right, we see a horse and when we look below it, what do we see? Again, wasted money, all right? So some of this stuff is easy to spot at home by simply taking the time to look. Okay, what do we think about the condition of this horse? What do we think about its facial expression? Do we think this horse could be in some sort of pain? You won't be able to see it in this photograph, but this horse actually, when we move to the next slide, has a tooth root abscess, and in fact it's caused a fistula. Fistula is when the, the material, the abscess, actually communicates with the outside of the jaw, so it's got pus dripping out the bottom of its jaw. If you look, you see one healthy tooth root, right, it's nice and white, it's got red periodontal ligament on it. Then we've got another root that's fractured, split down the middle, completely discoloured, this is the abscess root. Okay. Up on your left, you can see an x-ray, and if you look carefully, the little white line in the x-ray is a metal probe going in the bottom of the jaw and touching the root of the affected tooth. Now, despite being down now three teeth, which essentially means six chewing teeth, this is the same horse a few months after treatment. Okay, have a look at this guy. What do you think? So he's not in very good body condition. Now we're looking along his nose, we're looking up at his ears, and what I want you to do is compare the small muscle on, the, on your left with the small muscle on your right. They're just in front of his ears, and if you look left and right, you should notice there's a difference between the two. So the muscle on your left is much larger than the muscle on your right, and this is called a temporal muscle, because that's what they are, temporal muscle asymmetry. So whenever you see a temporal muscle asymmetry, again, it's, it's pathognomonic, it indicates there's a problem, because as you all sit around the dinner table tonight, if you look around at one another, no one's got a giant lump on one side of their forehead, do they? Okay, so to get this degree of asymmetry, this degree of imbalance or, or altered muscle development, you must have a really unusual chewing pattern, and that's usually going to be as a result of pain. So here's the problem, isn't it? Right, this is the front teeth of that horse, and we can all see we've got a problem here. Except guess what? Yes, you've got a problem here, but is this the cause of the temporal muscle asymmetry and the weight loss? The answer is actually no, okay? Now we're looking inside that same horse's mouth. This is the cause of the temporal muscle asymmetry and the weight loss. If you look towards the back of the mouth, you're going to see a large green area, okay? So we've got a fractured tooth here, a tooth that's split in half, much like the one we saw earlier. So when the tooth splits like that, one half goes out into the cheek. And you can see it's gouged a massive ulcer into the cheek. This is the cause of the temporal muscle asymmetry. This is a cause of dental pain. This must be addressed in this horse. Here we see the two halves of the tooth following extraction. It's a major undertaking to get these out. Okay, there's probably eight hours in this particular horse involved in getting those two halves of the teeth out. And when we move to the next slide, this is the same horse following removal of the teeth. Okay, so dramatic results are possible if you identify the source of pain correctly. And make no mistake, that dental pain in horses is serious, it's severe, it's common. Right, so what's in the middle of this tooth? We talked about it earlier, it's one of the biggest causes of pain in human dentistry, it's one of the biggest causes of pain in equine dentistry or horse dentistry. So, in the middle of that tooth, pulled out by that forcep, is one of the many nerves that run through this tooth. So make no mistake, all mammals have nerves in their teeth, including horses. And that's something we need to be thinking about whenever we are treating this pain or whenever we're diagnosing it. So to orientate you, we're looking side-on at a horse's mouth at the front. There's the speculum. Front teeth are under the bite plate. So this is a canine tooth. We've got a needle sticking out of that tooth. Should you be able to put a needle in a healthy tooth? And what's that bubbling out of the tooth like a volcano? Yeah, it's pus. So where did the pus come from? It came from the tooth root. So if we have pus on a horse's tooth root, it would be a tooth root abscess. Okay, so this tooth is dead, it's infected, and it needs removal. Looking at this slide, there's a few things you should notice. Firstly, there's flies everywhere. Uh, flies love blood, they love bacteria. Secondly, there's one tooth that doesn't look like any of the others, isn't there? So if you look closely, you should see a tooth right in the middle of the photograph on the lower jaw that's darker than all the others and where the gum is lower than the others. Okay, 
Anybody watching this got a dead tooth in their mouth? They haven't had bleached. What happens to the tooth over time? It becomes discoloured, doesn't it? So, this is a tooth that is dead. It has a dead pulp or a dead nerve. Now we're looking at the occlusal surface of the same tooth. So in, on the left hand side you see a needle, on the right hand side you see the needle completely in the tooth. In other words, down the canal where the living nerve should be. So we can only do this if the nerve is dead. This is a dead nerve, dead tooth, dead pulp. Right, needs extraction on root canal, otherwise we're going to get a tooth root abscess. Very, very painful. If you've had a root canal, you will understand what I'm talking about. Video here, and I'm not going to say too much except for you to watch it, have a look and think about whether this is painful for this horse. Numbers. Yep. Again, in summary, I'm not going to go through all the points there, simply that dental pain is common in horses, it requires a detailed examination to pick it up. Some of these things are very subtle to look at, but very painful for horses. No horse should go more than 12 months without a dental exam. And if you visit the website listed on the bottom of the slide, it will help you to get in touch with veterinarians in Australia and New Zealand who can assist you. Thank you.